What's up guys, how do you do? Welcome to today's different program with us TV. In this class we're going to see how to upload images to MySQL server, retrieve them and then show them in the list view right here. Okay. So these are images that we are storing of course in our MySQL as we'll see in a short while. So let's say for example that we want to have right here we can just come, type the name, it's actually both images and text. Then you type the description, okay? You type the description for that teacher then you come choose the photo all right we can actually go ahead choose our photos right here for example from the gallery or from the file manager so i can come right here just select the gallery and then you can see for example i can select this photo right here now i select it then i click send of course you can see this is roomy then php server response success if I come view all right here, you can see Rumi has actually been added. Okay, so that is it right here. We are sending these images right here to my SQL server. Let's say I want to add another one. For example, I can come right here and then have this one. Okay, and then type the description for this particular teacher. So I can come type the description for that teacher. Then I come choose the photo for the teacher from using our image picker just come from the gallery right here now i can go ahead choose for example the photo for him okay now let me choose a better photo so i can come here just select an image that i want to use for that particular teacher okay so i can for example come choose this one and then have it right here then i come click send now when i click send PHP server response very very fast. We've already sent it. Now if I click view all, we're able to view that particular teacher right here and you can see. Okay. So this is it guys. Multi-part uploading of images and text of course to MySQL from our Android app. This is actually a very very important tutorial because these are this is something which is very very common, especially for making a web app. You'd probably want to work with images and text and you want them stored on the server so in a detailed manner we're going to take you through step by step way okay into how to do that one efficiently and very fast so let's get started so first and foremost we actually need to come to our uh, database mysql database right here of course you can use zamp server or WAMP server now for me i'm using this uniform server once you've gone to it just click the php my admin okay go over to the php my admin these are GUI that allow us to uh, actually create as well as manipulate our databases okay visually so in this case all you need to do is now go ahead and create a new database just click database right here then create it okay type the database name right here then click create then of course once you've created the database you also need to create a table so like for me i already have my database spiritual teachers db you can see i have one table spiritual teachers tb then we come to it right here you can see some of the data that we have of course we're going to have an id as our first column then of course the teacher name will be the second column the teacher description as well as the teacher image url so what we'll be doing is that we're going to be saving the images image urls of course right in the database then the images themselves will be storing them in the file system okay so this is actually the more efficient approach instead of uh saving the blobs directly so this is what we're going to do the ids will be auto generated now if we come to the structure let's just look at the structure of the database you can see we have the id it's our primary key it's of type integer then of course you can see is going to be auto incremented as for the teacher the teacher description as well as the teacher image url these are actually strings or varka okay so yeah have them right there so the others they're actually nullable meaning that they can actually contain null okay in fact null is actually the default so yeah go ahead prepare your table then we proceed over so first and foremost we actually need to go and work with the php side so just move over to a server at the root directory most probably the www directory of your server if you're working with wamp and the htdocs in your 
a uh, zamp server okay go create a folder here i have mine as spiritual teachers now you can see we're going to have another folder create another folder that's going to host our images all right so you don't really need any images into it these images we're going to insert them from our uh we'll be inserting them from the mice from our android okay so just create an empty folder called images then of course create a file called index.php now those are the things that you need those are the only two things you need then we come right here you can see i have it right here in my visual studio code first and foremost you are going to start by this php code we are writing we're going to write php in an object oriented manner so first create a class called constants this is going to hold our database constants first we have the server okay which is the local host then we also have the database name which is the spiritual teachers db we have the username and the password now these are my custom username and password for my database normally if you've not if you don't have a custom user then you can just use root and then for the password you can just leave it to blank okay so if you're using php my admin now having done that one come over right here and then create this this is just a variable a string right here SQL select all select everything from spiritual teachers tb right it's just an SQL statement for selecting everything from the database so yeah we'll come and also create this other class i've called it spirituality so first and foremost we'll come and have this function that we call connect so this right is a function that's going to allow us to connect to our mysql database okay so we have it right here we're going to use the mysql in an object oriented manner so first we instantiate mysql and hold it in the con variable so while instantiating it we pass the database details like the server name the username the password as well as the database name we pass them via the constructor of the mysql then we're going to check if our con dot connect error that is if we have any error then we're going to return null all right so does it otherwise we return that particular connection mysql connection object now having done that one we'll have another function called insert so this function insert right is going to allow us to insert data to our mysql database all right so first we need right here we're going to connect right here and then hold the connection inside this con variable so we come right here we check if it's not equal to null then we proceed okay so we're going to come right here if our connection is not equal to null first and foremost we're going to have we're going to get the image name all right remember we're going to be making an http post request from our android which is actually the client so we'll make we're going to be sending we will be making a um a http post request okay we'll be uploading our image so we're going to get the file right here image name and then hold it in the image name right here then of course we'll have right here the teacher name we'll get the teacher name as you can see we're getting the teacher name from of course our post request all right this is like the teacher key right here the teacher name this is like the key okay so we pass in this one as well as our con variable in our mysql real escape string and hold it in the teacher name so having done that one we'll do the same of course with the description teacher description and then we'll come right here and then define the target directory okay where we're going to have store our image so target equal to images then dot base name we pass in the image name right here so having done that one we're going to define our sql statement this is the sql statement that we're going to use to insert data into our database so all we need to do is insert into spiritual teachers tb then teacher image url then teacher name and then teacher description okay so we're going to have that one right here then of course we're going to have the values as well as you can see if i bring it right here for the values we have the image name all right the teacher name as well as the teacher description which we've already received right here so 
does it these are sql statement for inserting into the database then of course to actually insert we're going to perform it in a try catch block so try catch then we first come and then make our conduit query then we actually execute this sql statement and hold the result inside this result variable then we're going to check if result equal to true then we're going to move the uploaded image of course into a directory so we come right here and say if move uploaded file then files image okay we we'll get it from the temporary location and then we we'll move it to the target location now we're doing this one inside an if conditional statement because if it is true then we'll know that we've successfully of course uh moved the image hence we'll print uh we'll return this one okay so print json encode array message equal to success otherwise we'll know that of course yeah we are able to save our data to the database but we are unable to move the image all right so this is what we're going to return to the client all right that is if we are unable to move the image uh, to the appropriate folder however the data is already saved to the database by this point so we'll do we'll return those ones we're just encoding json encoding an array and then printing it back to the client okay then we come right here otherwise we'll come and then json encode this one unsuccessful we say connection was successful but data could not be inserted okay so we're just going to be returning some useful images to the client now in case you have an exception we'll of course return this one right here okay error php exception we cannot save to mysql database then you actually get the exception message and sh of course um include it inside this particular array so we then just make sure that we close our connection so that's what we'll do that's how we're going to insert data of course into our mysql database what about selecting data well to select data is rather simple we'll just come first obtain our connection check if the connection is not equal to null then of course execute our sql select all statement read hold our result in this result variable check if the numbers of rows that have been affected in our result is greater than zero if that's the case then we know we've successfully in, uh, we've actually retrieved some data from the database all right so we create an array right here then we're going to look through our result right here okay result.fetch array we'll look through them then we're going to push data into this particular array spiritual teachers that we've created row by row so array push then we have the spiritual teachers that is the target array where we're pushing the data then we come right here okay we have the array id then we get the id right here okay teacher name teacher name we're going to have them right here okay so if we just bring this one this way so you guys can see okay so this is row by row we're going to be retrieving of course the id the teacher name the teacher description the teacher image url and then pushing them of course into our array so this is we're doing row by row okay so one row or one one row of course in our database we're going to be pushing them of course in our array right here using the array push method so that's what we'll do there then of course having done that one we're now going to just reverse okay this is optional we can reverse the data so that we have the last ins last reinserted item first okay using the re array reverse method and then return it back actually json encode it all right we json encode it turn it from an array into json and then print it all right so that's what we're going to do there then we just make sure that we close our connection as well so that's all we'll do then we're having this helper function that we call handle request so we come we're going to check if is set post name all right then we invoke this dot insert otherwise we 
invoke the select. Basically, what you are checking, you are checking the type of HTTP request that they that you are receiving from the client. Now, if it is a post request, if we have this one, then we'll insert otherwise. If it is not this one, then we'll know that it is a GET request, and then we select data. So that's all we'll do. We come and then instantiate this spirituality class, and then invoke the handle request method. So that's all we need to do right there so if you go ahead and run this one before moving over to java we have it right here i can go ahead refresh then i come spiritual teachers i run it you can see we are able to retrieve our data from the database okay and print it right here of course in form of json so this is actually the data that we have in our database and in fact if we come to the database table you can actually see we have this data right here so that's it this is it let's proceed over to and write some java code so as usual the first thing we have to do is to create the project so type the application name then of course we have the phone and tablet that's what we're targeting so choose the minimum api then we go over to next we have some templates We'll choose over the empty activity then of course we're going to have our activity being backwards compatible so just check this one then click finish to generate our project so first thing first let's move over to our gradle scripts okay so as you can see normally we have these two build.gradle files F the first one is what we call the project level build.gradle as you can see this is where we specify the class path for our gradle right here then we have some all projects and now we have right here the repositories where we can actually fetch some of the packages or libraries you are using now by default we have this google and the jcenter so we don't really have to modify this project level or root root level build.gradle we have the second one the build the app level build.gradle as you can see we have for example down right here some of the dependencies that we're going to use okay under uh, the dependencies section so first you can see and we have the app compact we have the card view given that our list is going to contain cards we also have the design support given that yeah we have the design support right here then you also have the android networking and you also have the picasso so these two the last two picasso as well as the android networking these are third party libraries all right so android networking is actually our http client library that we're going to use and picasso is the image loader that you're going to use to load the images from the server so please add them then of course click sync to synchronize the project now you need internet connection to add these two android networking and picasso so having done that one we'll now move over to our manifests go over to android manifest.xml now here we need to add two permissions first the permission for reading external storage given that the images that you're going to upload we're going to read them from the external storage so add this permission also need the permission for internet given that the app is going to access internet so please add those permissions and then we'll have a second activity called items activity we'll see it later on is the work activity that's going to contain of course our list of items all right now the first activity of course is the main activity so the two important things is to add these ones permission as well as the read external storage right here okay was the android the internet permission as well as the read internet read external storage permission now having done that one we're going to come right here under the drawable we're going to have a one image a jpg called the image placeholder now image placeholder this image reader is going to hold for us actually while we're trying to download images from the server in the process of downloading we're going to use this image as the placeholder okay so that we can show something to the user so we download the image via picasso and then replace this placeholder image with that image that we've downloaded now we have right here under the values we have the colors.xml we're not modifying them 
then we have the strings dot xml we also not modifying them and also the styles dot xml we are not modifying them now under the layouts we're going to create two layouts one layout one layout the activity main dot xml has actually been generated for us by android studio right so inside this layout of course we're going to have the relative layout as our root element then we have the text view which is actually the header for our app we have a progress bar which will be shown when we are downloading our data right then we also have a linear layout where we have our edit text for typing the name and then the edit text for typing the description and then we also have the image view that will hold our image placeholder image and then of course the image that we're going to read from external storage we have this button that will allow us to choose to show for us the file picker which will allow us to choose the image okay that we desire then we have the send button which when clicked will send our data to mysql server then we have the view all which when clicked will open for us the new activity actually the items activity for us to display of course the list of items from our database all right so yeah we're going to have that one this is not rendering so we'll come apart from that one we also have the items activity or the activity items so activity items is the layout for items activity we'll look at this activity later on at the root we have a linear layout whose orientation is vertical then we have the text view right here which of course is the header for the application we have a progress bar now this progress bar will also be shown while we are loading our data okay from the server now in the activity main the progress bar was being shown while we are sending data to the server right this one right here while we are sending data or saving data to mysql now this other one will get shown while we are downloading data from of course the uh, our server then you have the list view which is going to render those particular data now having done that one go ahead create a new layout just right click right here now go over to the um we're going to create a new xml then choose the layout xml file okay now i've named mine the raw model.xml this is going to be our model layout okay it's going to actually define for us a single list view item so we have a card view right here and then we have a relative layout with an image view now this is going to display the image from my school and then we have the name text view which will display the name of the teacher and then the description text view to display the teacher description so this is it just our model layout okay yeah it's going to represent a single card in our card view so these are the layouts okay so let's now move over to our java code right so the next thing that you come here to do is to come of course to our main activity first yeah before we go yeah let's before we create the items activity let's come to the main activity probably android studio has already generated for you okay so these are going to be my imports that we're going to use now the first thing that we're going to do right here is to come and then define some fields right here okay first you can see we have this particular constant pick image request we have a traitor we also have a uri okay object then we have two edit text name edit text and description edit text we have one image view teacher image view then we have one two buttons show choose a button and then send to my square button we also have one progress bar upload progress bar so those we're going to have them as our instance fields for our main activity then we'll come here and create our class an inner class that we call a spiritual teacher this is just a pojo class plain old java object now you can see here we have this name and description as the instance fields they'll be set to us passed to us via the constructor okay name and description then we'll come and then have the get name which will return name get description will return description those are getter methods then 
will have outside this class okay outside it and just within our main activity we're going to create another inner class that we call up my uploader so my uploader this is a class that will be responsible for sending or uploading both our images and text to our mysql server so first and foremost we come right here now it's actually this is actually important we want to define the uri okay that points us to the server now you can see this is the one i've used i've actually used the ip address for my emulator given that um i'm using the nox emulator all right now most probably for you guys you don't want to use this one right here okay yeah 10.0.2.2 okay use this ip address for the emulator that is if you're working with an emulator like Genie Motion, or if you're working with the default uh, android emulator right now if you want to use the ip address then also actually go ahead and check the ip address for your computer and use it right so go check your ip address for the computer you can check it online just go in google search your ip address you'll find it and then use it right here or you can use this one all right as the base url and then of course you point right here the path to your index.php file you guys saw of course for me i actually had my file right here you can see i have it in my server spiritual teachers then i have it index.php right here okay so point the path that will lead us to that uh php script which of course we've written where well, we've written our php logic for saving and selecting data then we have two more instance fields a context object as well okay actually a context object then you have our constructor public my uploader is going to receive a context object and then set it to this context c then once we have that one we are now going to have this method for uploading public void upload you can see our upload method is taking in two objects first we have the spiritual teachers and then we have the view params okay so this right here we're going to receive several um views right here view objects okay we, we're going to receive them we that's why we use these particular params right here so we'll come and then check if s equal to null okay and then we're going to show a toast message we're going to say no data to save that is if our spiritual teacher object is equal to null otherwise we'll come and then define or declare our file image file then we come and then instantiate the image so image file equal to new file then get image path we will we'll create a, a helper method that will receive of course our uri and return the path okay for us which will pass to our file constructor now we'll create this get image path method later on for now if we have any exception right here then we're going to show it we're going to say please pick an image from the right place maybe gallery or file explorer so that we can get its path that is if we're unable to retrieve the path of the image given where you selected it from so we'll show this one in the toast message now we'll proceed over and have right here and then otherwise okay once we've shown this one then we'll return from execution actually we'll stop right there otherwise we'll set our we'll show our progress bar upload progress by the set visibility view dot visible this will show for us the upload progress bar then of course we'll invoke the upload method so android networking dot upload then we pass in the data upload url so data upload url is this url which will point us to a php script so once we've done that one we just invoke the upload method then we're going to make we add the multi-part we'll be making a multi-part upload so we come right here add multi-part file then we pass in the image okay the image file object this is actually a file object is what we're uploading then we assign it a key right here then of course we add the multi-part parameters that is the teacher name which we are sending alongside the image so s dot get name and then the teacher description s dot get description then 
we add of course the multi add multiple parameter name upload this is just the identifier that we can actually use for this particular request so having done that one we're also going to set the tag rate and then set the priority then we build this one and this is actually going to upload for us the data to the mysql server okay yeah now given that we actually desire to receive a response we're going to listen to a response and we'll receive it in form of a json object so we can get as json object then of course right here we're going to have our anonymous class new json object request listener then we'll override two methods okay in the process the first on response that is if we've received a valid response from the server and then on error in case we've received an error of which will print the error in the stack trace now if our response is valid we're going to check right here okay if response is not equal to null okay then we'll proceed otherwise we'll show a null response in the toast message now if it is not null then we'll have a try catch exception where we're going to up actually decode our json okay or pass our json data so string response string is called to response dot get we pass in the message you guys can remember this message is actually the key okay which was being passed to us from our server so we pass in the message then we invoke the dot to string and then we print out a toast message php then response string we show that particular response string just to allow us to help us in debugging at runtime okay now if response string dot equals ignore case success then this is what we'll do we're going to reset the views now first we need to retrieve those particular views from our params so name edit text input views the first view which will pass to the params will be of course our ed name edit text then you have the description then we also have the teacher image view now once we have them then we're going to reset them we reset of course name edit text to empty description edit text to empty and then teacher image view we set an image resource right here the placeholder image okay so we'll do that one now that is if our response string was actually success otherwise if it wasn't then we're going to say that php wasn't successful okay so we do that one then we proceed over right here so we will also of course once we've actually completed um once we've actually completed our response once we've actually completed our request right here okay okay we're going to get a, a response via the on response right here then of course for the error we'll have the on error so once we've passed our json uh, actually once we've sent our data to the server we're going to dismiss our upload progress but remember this one right here we were actually uploading data okay and then of course we are receiving a response just a simple response string then we pass it and then show it in a toast message so having done the, those ones we are now going to dismiss our upload progress bar okay yeah so we dismiss it by just setting the visibility to view dot gone so having done that one in case we have an error also we're also going to dismiss that particular a progress bar and then show that particular error in a toast message for us at runtime so that will do for us then we'll come right here and have another method a helper method that we call show file chooser so show file chooser is actually a method that will allow us to choose files from our file explorer okay or gallery so we'll come right here intent equal to new intent we insert the intent object set the type to image then set the action to intent dot action get content this will allow us to retrieve our images so we'll come and then start the activity for result this is going to we actually intend to show our um activity for choosing our the, the activity dialog for choosing our images okay 
so we come right here start activity for result then intent will create chooser we pass in the intent then of course the message the title of the dialogue and then of course our request code okay so which would this request code would actually define it earlier as a constant so having done that one we're now going to override the on activity result as you can see we are receiving the request code the result code as well as the data which is the, an intent basically so we'll come right here and check if our request code equal to pick image request and result code equal to result okay and data is not equal to null and data to get data is also not equal to null then we're going to receive the file path so file path equal to data dot get data all right so this is basically the path we're going to be receiving the path to the image so we hold it inside this path exactly you are you are right okay get data is going to return for us the uri for that particular image now we hold it of course in the file path so having done that one we're going to have a try catch exception try catch block where we're going to catch the io exception all right so we come first we're going to get our bitmap so bitmap bitmap equal to media store dot images dot media dot get bitmap then we pass in the content resolver as well as the file path so having done that one we're going to set the bitmap to our image view using the set image bitmap so we're going to do that one just within our try catch block and then we'll come right here have the get image path now get image path as you can see is receiving a uri right here okay it's just a helper method so basically what we want is that if you pass a uri object then we return for your string that represents the image path okay then that image path you can actually use it to um we can pass it of course to a file object while creating our image file so that's what we're going to do right here inside this particular helper method so first we get our cursor right here using the content resolver then query then we pass in this projection right here okay then we also pass in the uri which we've actually received then we check if our cursor is not is equal to null we're going to return null otherwise we're going to come right here column index equals to cursor dot get column index or throw then media so dot images dot media dot data okay then cursor dot move to first then of course we're going to have right here string s cursor dot get string we pass in our column index now this string that we're receiving is actually going to be uh, the path right here okay the image path then we close our cursor and then return that particular path okay so that's our get image path method so having looked at it we'll come right here and have this helper method that you call validate data is going to perform for us basic validation so first we retrieve of course the data from our name edit text and description edit text then we're going to check in case they are null we're going to return false okay in case the name or description are null will return false also if they are empty also going to return false also if the file path is null will also return false otherwise we will return true okay now we come right here and then we're going to override the on create method so on create method of course is uh is actually an activity callback that get traced when the activity is created you can see we are receiving a bundle object so the on create method which is actually a callback method of course first and foremost set content view will inflate for us the activity main and use it of course as the user interface for activity so we'll come right here we're going to reference several widgets okay now we serve the name edit text which of course will be used to enter the name description to enter the description now show choose a button as the name suggests will show for us the image user dialogue now send to my SQL as the name suggests will send for us our data to my SQL then open activity button will open for us the items activity teacher image view will show for us the teachers image then the upload progress bar will show for us a progress bar will we are uploading our data 
So those are the things we're going to do. We're going to listen to click events for our show chooser button. Now when that button is clicked, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show our file chooser. On the other hand, if the send to my school button is clicked, this is what we'll do. We're going to first validate data, okay? Our validate data method should return for us a boolean. Now, if it is true, then of course the data will have passed that validation test. So we're just going to get the values. We first start by getting the teacher's name, then the teacher's description. Then we're going to instantiate the spiritual teacher passing in that name as well as the description. Then of course we're going to send data, that data to my school. So how do we send it? Well, we just instantiate the my uploader, okay? Now we pass in the context, which is main activity dot this. Then we invoke the upload method. So upload method will upload our data. We pass in the S. Now S is actually our string. The S right not string, sorry, is actually our spiritual teacher object. So we pass it and then we pass in the various widgets, okay? the two edit text as well as the one image view so that's what we'll do then of course we're going to catch actually if this does has not passed the validation then we'll show this toast message okay prompting the user to enter all fields correctly so that will do for us then we're going to have our listen to the on click events for our act open activity button so when it's clicked we're just going to first instantiate the intent right here then pass in the context as well as the target class which is the ac items activity then we come and then invoke the start activity so start activity we pass in the intent so having done that one in fact that's it that's it for this particular main activity right here okay yeah main activity is actually where we're going to upload our data to my SQL server so that will do for us let's now move over to our items activity okay so the next thing is to actually have our second activity the first activity was the main activity it was the activity we we're using to actually upload data to our php server now the second activity is the activity that you are going to use to receive those particular the data okay yeah so we'll be uploading and then at the same time retrieving the data so just come right here go over to empty activity create an empty activity this will generate for you of course a layout and this is also going to automatically register it for you to the manifest okay yeah so the activity will be registered retain the manifest if you create it via android studio now activity items dot xml is our layout you can see we have of course a list view now this list view is what we'll use to show the data well this progress bar will get shown while we are downloading the data of course the activity is deriving from the app compat activity all right so first and foremost we're going to have this inner class we call teacher this class is going to be of course a pojo a plain old java object you can see this teacher will have a name a description as well as the photo url of the image url so that the constructor will receive that name description and the image url right there and then set them to these local instance fields then we'll also have the getter methods which will return for us those particular properties of the teacher then we'll come right here outside that teacher class we're going to create one more class called a list view adapter as the name suggests is going to this adapter class so we're going to derive from the base adapter okay so we come we have context object as well as an array list of teachers as the instance fields then we're going to have these two the two context and array list okay being passed to us via the constructor then we'll assign them to these instance fields then of course this given that we've actually derived from the base adapter you can see we've been given two options to make this class abstract or to implement the abstract methods okay the abstract method get few so we'll choose the latter but before that one we're going to also override or implement the get count where we're going to return teachers dot size okay the number of teachers 
as the count for our adapter. Then we we'll also have the get item where we're going to return a single teacher as our item. Then we we'll also have the get item ID. We're going to use the teacher's position as the ID. Then get fill right here. Now this is the most important method in this particular list view adapter class. It should return for us a view object. That view object will be inflated from this particular row model. Okay. So row model, this is actually the model for a single view item. At the root, we have a card view. So yeah, it will get inflated and then returned as a view object. Now, what we'll do first, given that this inflation is actually an expensive process, we're going to check if the view is actually null. All right. So if view is null, then we're going to go ahead and inflate it. So to inflate it, we just have to use the layout inflator class. And then as you can see, we are passing in the raw model. That is the layout that we want to inflate. So we will inflate it on the condition that the view is actually null. Okay. Otherwise, we will be, we will be subsequently reusing that particular view object. Okay. So we will inflate it once when the view is null. And then we reuse the view object instead of inflating it every time. Now, having inflated it, we can now use it, okay, to find various widgets that are defined in that raw model. For example, we have the txt name, txt description, as well as the teacher's image view. Now we find them from that particular inflated view, and then we come right here. We also retrieve the current teacher, okay? So. This get view will be called for every row in our list view. So for every row, we're going to be retrieving the current teacher by passing in the teacher's position, all right? And then casting the resultant object to a teacher object. So once we have that one, we're now going to retrieve the name of the teacher and set it to the txt name. We also retrieve the name, the description of the teacher and set it to the txt description. And then we're going to check for the image URL. So if teacher.getImage URL is not equal to null and teacher.getImage URL dot length is greater than zero, if that's the case, then this is what we'll do. We're going to use Picasso. Now Picasso, as we said earlier on, this is actually an image loader library. Okay. Now one of the most popular image loader library out there. You use it to actually load images either from the file system or from online. Now in this case, we are using it for the latter, loading images from online, basically from our PHP server. So Picasso.get, all right, then dot load, then we pass in the image URL, get image URL right there, then dot placeholder, all right, then we pass in the drawable. Now we are going, this drawable right here is what we are going to use as our placeholder image, basically meaning that before we have upload downloaded the image the placeholder image will get shown so that the user can have something at least placed in the image view then we load it of course into a teacher's image view teacher image view yeah that is if our image url is not null or empty otherwise if it is then we're just going to show a test a toast message and then of course load the placeholder image of course into the into our image view of course still via picasso all right now we're going to listen to click events for this particular inflated view all right for the card view that is the item view for our list view when click to what we will do we were just going to show a simple toast message so toast dot make text teacher get name and then we show it so that's what we'll do right there okay so with that one, we've actually worked with the adapter. Now, our final class, the data retriever. This is our HTTP client. We're going to retrieve data from MySQL via this one, all right? So we have it right here. So once more, we will need to, of course, make our connection, OK? So we need the URL. Now, as you can see, I've actually used my IP address for the computer, OK? This will allow me to access the emulator so this is the ip address right here now of course you can search for your ip address online or optionally you can actually use this one okay if 
you are using you can actually test these zones okay if you're using something like the blue stacks you can use this 10.0.2.2 as the ip address for the emulator then if you're using genu motion you can use 10.0.3.2 okay now you can also get your ip address and use it now to get the ip address open up your terminal or command prompt and type ip config slash all then check for your ip address in the result right there and use it okay now that is it right there for our that this right is going to be our php mysql site url so having done that one we're going to have two instance fields context object as well as a list view adapter the context will be retrieved will be received via the constructor then we're going to have this method called retrieve is going to receive for us a list view object as well as a progress bar so we come here we're going to instantiate our array list okay the array list of teachers then we're going to set in determinate to true to our progress bar all right then we show the progress bar by setting the visibility to view dot visible then we come right here we use our android networking to make our http get request okay the other time we made an http post request this time round we are making an http get request given that we are retrieving data so we pass in the php mysql site url and then set the priority and then invoke the build and then we retrieve our response in terms of json array so we pass in an anonymous class right here json array request listener then we're going to provide two methods on response and on error so on error will be of course called when we re receive an error of which we're going to dismiss our progress bar and then show the error in a toast message on the other hand on response right here we are going to first have our json object and teacher object declare them then create a try catch block where we're going to pass our json array so we're going to look through our response remember is a json array so we can look through it then for each iteration we'll be retrieving or receiving of course the json object okay a json array is basically made of json objects so we retrieve the json object and hold it in the jo then of course from that jo we're going to receive the integer that is the id the teacher name the teacher description and the teacher image url now we'll pass those ones of course into our teacher object as you can see we pass the name we pass the description and then we pass the url now remember for the url we are actually going to be storing if you guys saw our database we were actually storing okay in fact i think i have the image right here so you can see we were just storing the path okay not okay actually the name of the image you can see right here okay we're well, not really you can see these are the image the just the name of the image that's what you are storing in the database so because of that one we actually need to supply of course the url you can see this is the base url okay and then we have the slash images and then slash that image url so this image url in fact i should have called it the image name okay yeah so that's it have it right to it and then add the teacher into a teacher's array okay so that is it once we've done that one then we're going to proceed over and then instantiate our list view adapter passing in the context as well as our teachers array list then set the adapter to a list view okay via the set adapter method then dismiss our progress bar that's what we'll do then we come override the on track method now we set of course our content view as the activity items then of course we reference our list view list view right here my list view find view by id r dot id dot my list view also reference the progress bar all right then we come right here data retriever so we instantiate the data retriever then invoke the retrieve method in the retrieve method we're going to pass in our list view this should actually be list view not grid view 
then we pass in the upload progress bar right there okay in our retrieve method so that's it guys that's all we need to do right here that's our own create method okay now all we now need to do is to just make sure that you've added the permission these two permissions in our manifest the read external storage as well as the internet permission so add them and then just run the project so that we see the result now of course we'd shown the demo while starting so please make sure you guys subscribe to our channel program users tv okay we're getting more and more subscribers as we continue growing and we're doing more and more tutorials subscribe if you haven't like the video share it and check the source code in our website take care i'll catch you in the next class